Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. We are having a bit of a Japanese week, because, one, well, it, it's what it is, and uh, I had a lot of things that kind of coincided which would nicely fit, so we'll have three Japanese videos this week. And we're kicking things off with the brand new uh, Tier 8 Premium Heavy Cruiser. And if you have seen the official world, uh, the official Wargaming release trailer for this ship. Um, I hope you cringed as much as I have because this is not the tone. This is the Tone. Now the, the Tone and her sister ship, the Chikuma, were in pretty much every single battle that, uh, every, single every single major battle that, uh, that, that was happening during the Pacific War. And uh, her, her scout planes are actually reasonably famous especially one of them, the number four float plane that the Tone was sending up during the Battle of Midway. So during the Battle of Midway, the Japanese were trying to, well, attack Midway. The Americans knew that because of intelligence and because they had managed to crack the codes and uh, they, they knew that the Japanese were coming. The Japanese didn't know that the Americans knew. They also didn't know that the Americans had carriers in the in the area. So... Uh, they, the general approach was from the Japanese to send out float planes from the cruisers and from other ships, if, if possible, to go and scout. And the Tone was one of the ships that sent out her float plane. And that float plane actually managed to spot the American carrier group. Unfortunately, at the time, it was the only one of all the, uh, the float planes that spotted them. Unfortunately, Due to, due to bureaucracy and general slowness and ineffectiveness of uh, you know command and everything, it took way too long to for the for that information to actually reach Admiral Nagumo, and the the float plan, the pilot was also not actually reporting properly what co what composition the ships were in that he was that he had sighted, so. Eh, it, it, it all led to the fatal decision to quickly rearm the to quickly rearm the the bombers from land attack to ship attack which meant that just at the time when the Americans were were ju uh, jumping in with their dive bombers the Japanese were busy rearming everything had explosive stuff laying everywhere uh, to had fuel hoses everywhere laying around and uh, that meant that the dive bomber hits on the carriers proved to be extremely fatal. So could have things could have done a little differently if they had been more effective in their communications and in their scouting and uh, had listened to the number four float plane from the Tone. So what do we have in the game here? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of special things about this ship. So let's, uh, let, let's, let's begin with some comparisons. Um, actually, before we do that, let, let's have a very, clo very close look at the rear of the ship. Uh, you, you, you might spot something here that you don't usually spot on cruisers. 
the float planes. <laughs> now, in reality, a lot of the cruisers have float planes. It's just not a mechanic that we're seeing in the game very much. The Tone gets torpedo bombers, and um, it's these things. Now, uh, there, it's it's not what you think. It's not an easy sort of situations. First of all, these are M6A2s. These were not <laughs> the planes that were sitting on the Tone. Uh, these things actually existed, although the A2 is a prototype, and I'm not sure if more than one prototype was actually built. But uh, these these planes were on the I-400 class of submarines because the Japanese uh, were realizing that they didn't quite have a chance to get through with carriers to attack the American mainland. And there were actually missions sketched around the I-400 series of submarines to, uh, to, to get a bombing run onto the Panama Canal. But uh, by the time that they got to the point where, uh, where they could have done it, it didn't matter anymore, really. But these were the float planes that were supposed to be carried on the I-400 submarines and not on the Tone. But um, because reasons, we have them here. And they're torpedo bombers, which is also not usually something you'd carry on a, on a cruiser. Uh, there's a little, it's a little bit special because let's look at the statistics. So the first thing that stands out, we only get seven of them. That is a very low number. Uh, there's, it's one squadron and uh, each squadron has four planes and each plane drops two torpedoes. In return, the torpedoes do only about half the damage. <laughs> so in effect, you're having the same amount of damage you would, you would get just with more torpedoes. It's, it's harder to dodge them. Uh, they have very low health. The torpedoes have a pretty short range, and it takes an abysmal amount of time to actually uh, to actually get these ready again. And that that makes sense because these are float planes, right? It's not that you could land a float plane back on a cruiser. It doesn't have a landing strip or anything on it. So it's a float plane. You land it in the water. The cruiser then gets the uh, gets the crane out and lifts it back onto onto the ship. So that takes a little bit of time, a bit longer than landing on a carrier. Um, yeah, now let's let's have a look at some comparison because the the first obvious comparison is with the Takao, which is a different different cruiser, but it's also it's the Tech Tree Heavy Cruiser at Tier Eight. So let's compare the two of them and see how how they how they match up with each other. Well, first of all, the Tone actually gets a better precise aim and it gets a defensive AA, which the Takao doesn't. Uh, the Tone is ever so slightly better protected than Takao, and she is a tick more maneuverable, although I would say in, in practice it doesn't make a huge kind of difference. The Tone gets technically the same guns as the Takao, they have a little bit longer, longer range, and she only gets four of them, and we get to that in a second as well, because that's also special about this ship. Uh, we don't get the Takao's torpedoes, we only get, we get four triple launches, which is I think what you would get on the Miyoko, but I'll have to check. They do get a slightly faster reload, though, to somewhat uh, somewhat um, compensate for well the, the fact that you only get you only get twelve and not sixteen of them. Uh, obviously, the Takao doesn't have any planes, and uh, AA wise, the Tone is slightly below the Takao, but she does get the defensive AA, so she has a bit of AA capability. Although in tier eight, she is not an AA cruiser. And concealment-wise, the Tone is actually still better than the Takao. Now, these planes, I did mention, they have reasonably low health. And uh, just how low that health is, is if we compare the Tone to the Zuiho, the <laughs> Tier 5 Japanese tech tree carrier. And we look at the torpedo bombers there, we see this is round about the same. So, um, these are Tier 5 planes in a Tier 8 battle, which means you're up against... At, at best, Saipan, at worst, tier 9 carriers. <laughs> and you're, um, you're firmly in the range of things like the Indomitable. So, uh, so what, what do you do? The, well, let's, before we answer that question, let's have a very quick look back at the gun layout at the other end of the ship. Because while the rear half of it is firmly, in the, uh, is firmly there for the planes, the front half of it is firmly there for the guns. So we have all four guns on the front. In a little bit of an awkward arrangement, though. So the first, the front two turrets are super firing. The other turrets are having going to have to swing the long way around. So if you want to get them from one side to the other, which is which is really strange. I mean, you you would have imagined that if they fit around this way, they would have fit around the other way. <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? You could have swung them around just across the bow of the ship rather than having to 
having to go around the long way if you want to go from one side to the other. But yeah, uh, all the guns are forward oriented, which is slightly awkward because the torpedo angles, and I think we're seeing the torpedoes, they're kind of here. You can see these these like slots here in the sides. I think these are for the um, for the torpedo launchers. The torpedo angles are absolutely dreadful. While the Takao is the first heavy cruiser in the Japanese line and actually has decent torpedo angles, this thing very much does not. Uh, the torpedoes are either fire, fire backwards or to your absolute broadside, but they very much definitely do not fire forwards. Which means that given that all the guns are forwards and all the torpedoes are pointing backwards, you're, you're kind of in a pickle. You can either play the ship bow in, in which case you're not going to be using your torpedoes very much, or you're going to be kiting away, in which case your guns are going to be really awkwardly positioned. <laughs> so... Um, it's it's um, it's it's a little bit of a tricky a tricky situation. Plus, you only get four of them, obviously, not the five that you would get on the taco. So, the second problem being the torpedo planes, because while well, while you're in the EZ, you have dive bombers which you send somewhere and then you forget about them. Uh, and the EZ is a battleship with a twenty second reload. This thing is a cruiser which does not have battleship armor, it does not have a 20 second reload, and these are torpedo planes, which means you actually have to actively manage them while, they're, while you're flying. So for the half minute, minute or so that you're, you're messing around with your torpedo planes, you're not playing the cruiser. And uh, if you're not careful, well, you don't have a cruiser anymore <laughs> at, the time, at the end, but you're also not firing your guns and you're not doing any damage because, well, these are very squishy torpedo planes and they don't do any more damage than a regular squadron. So um, that sort of disconnect makes it a little bit hard. Now, what would you use these torpedo planes for? There are two uses for the torpedo planes. Um, I, I have to put in. Uh, I have to point out here that I am an absolute potato when it comes to uh, to carrier playing and to controlling planes, especially torpedo planes. So. Um, if, if, you, if you see me missing horribly, that's not because of the ship, that's because I'm crap <laughs> when it comes to torpedo planes. But um, th there are two uses for these things, really. The first use is uh, to scout, and this is what these things were actually meant for. So if there is no carrier in-game, you can use these for an early scout. The second use is to, well, either bully destroyers if you can, much, uh, if you can manage to actually, well, drop torpedo planes reliably, which, uh, which I can't, <laughs> or um, to take out really, really low health ships that you otherwise can't reach. But that's a fairly obscure sort of situation that you don't really find very much. So mostly I use these as scout planes for an early scout, because this is, and this, this actually gets us to, um, to the build. As is common for my for my Japanese cruisers, I am playing them with a concealment mod, which is probably not everybody's cup of tea, with um, because the uh, uh, you you could get the steering gear mod, and um, I think in, in the on the Taka I'm actually playing with the steering gear mod in slot two, but uh, the the dis, uh, the concealment is so good on this ship that you almost get destroyer concealments in this thing. Uh, with the concealment modification, which means you are less likely to be killed early on in the battle while you're flying around with your with your scout planes. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah, uh, proposal mod in slot one because I am, I I was kind of tempted to play it more in a bow in role uh, than in the kite away, run away, shoot on the rear sort of role that's more traditional for how I play, play Japanese cruisers. Because also, once again, the guns are firmly pointing forward. So if you are straight ru straight up running away from somebody, while in something like the Takao, you can fire... Um, we have a quick, quick look. What was the gun layout on the Takao? Let's have a very quick look. It's three It's three forward, two backwards, yeah. So what, if you're running... If you're in a Takao and you're running straight away from someone, you can fire four guns. In the Tone, you can fire zero guns. Because, well... <laughs> It doesn't have any pointing backwards, and the superstructure is in the way. So uh, that makes kiting a little bit awkward in the ship, I find. And um, uh, yeah, that that's kind of why why I have the setup as it is to play a little bit more bow in sort of style. Um, there are two uh, there there are two bonuses you can you can pick from. You can either get hit points, AA damage, and main battery traverse, or you can get torpedo reload or torpedo traverse. I went with the uh, main battery traverse because the traverse is really dreadful. So with this whole setup, we come to just over nine sec nine degrees per second uh, for for the guns. And like I said, the 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 second pair, the X and Y turret, you actually have to uh, to loop the long way around if you want to swing from one side to the other. 
Reloads on the slow side, but other than that, um, they are pretty good guns. Now, with the whole setup, my base surface detection is 7 kilometers, And that's without historical gamma. So, yeah, you almost have destroyer concealment in the ship, which can lead to some really interesting plays where you can, you know, squat positions in a cruiser that you could otherwise not get to um, and, or just get to in a destroyer. But it is a big ship, so you you, you can't stay in a center cup easily <laughs> and not be spotted. But, yeah, you can sail around a little bit without that. Um, the commander I've put in here, I have actually used the um, return speed of aircraft. You don't really need to, honestly. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine to say to just use the underwater protection. I mean, it's not a super important skill because 3% damage reduction on torpedo hits is not a huge amount. But um, you're not going to be playing your planes a lot because they die very quickly. The T5 planes. Uh, got the torpedo alert, got my artillery maintenance. I do, you do want probably the air defense alert and the exploit weakness. But uh, don't try to do the uh, double tap uh, set perma flat sort of things because you just don't have enough planes for it. I mean, you can give it a shot, but expect not to see your planes coming back anymore. I've got fire supremacy for an additional precise aim and the marksman. And then actually adrenaline rush on, on T8 because I do tend to play the ship a little bit more aggressively due to the gun placement than I would otherwise do. The camo, the historical car, it comes with a... It's not an anime camo, but it's a weird camo, so I'm going to ignore that. But the historical camo gives us, while while being reasonably pretty, gives us uh, range, top range, uh, traverse, and better surface detection. It's the surface detection is really what you're up, what you're up for. And um, I mean, main battery firing range isn't bad either. But we are absolutely going to stick with this one for now, which also gives us some good surface detection reduction. And um, lastly, I think we'd have a very quick look at the battle honors. Uh, yeah, cost, cost 10 floods and play 10 battles, so it, we don't even need to talk about this in, in premium ships. It's just free resources, basically, that you get for even just moderately playing a couple of casual games. All right, let's see it in action. In the first battle, we're playing on Hourglass, and it's a we're top tier. It's a tier 8 battle. We've got North Carolina, Kansas, Nagato, Shapi, Edinburgh, Cleveland, and Aki on the enemy team. Now, one thing the Tona isn't, and that's a Destroyer Hunter. It's a destroyer spotter with the plane, but it's not so much of a of a ship that is uh, very, very qualified to actually hunt down destroyers because you only have eight guns. The dispersion is okay. It's not grand and um, the reload is on the slow side. The armor piercing on these Japanese 203 millimeters uh, is, is truly dreadful. So most of the time you just really want to you actually have better chances to uh, for citadel hits with the high explosive than with the armor piercing. All right, so we are spot we are spawning on the right flank. So I'm just moving the ship a little bit forward, and um, we're going to go out scouting because there's no carrier. So we're going to see if we can find uh, and there you see the torpedo angles. We're going to see and find if we can uh, see if we can find out where the enemy team is coming. I just want to be in a somewhat concealed position such that a destroyer is not going to spot me. But yeah, if you look at the small uh, dotted line around, uh, my ship is extremely uh, sneaky. Even more so than, than the Taco. Okay, put the ship to halt and then get the torpedo bombers out. I'm not going to try and necessarily torpedo anything, but uh, I just want to go and scout. And uh, if I have an opportunity, I might be able to drop some torps. But as I mentioned before, I am absolutely terrible. Oh, okay, there's the Edinburgh, and we know where the destroyer is. So there's no real need for us to go any more scouting, because we know where the DD is. He's on the other side. Then um, we'll see if we can drop some torps on the Edinburgh. And yeah, yeah, I know you're all shouting at me like, oh, you're not using the, sh the, the, the planes right. I thought he was actually going to slow down and try and dodge the, uh, the torpedo bombers. But uh, no, he just went straight, <laughs> straight ahead. So, okay. And we're still not spotted because even at this range, Edinburgh can't see us. But uh, now we're going to open up and he's realized that he's bitten off a lot more than he could chew because I am actually lurking here behind. Uh, now he sits sits in his, I don't know if he's radar um, or, or something, but he is definitely spotted in there. So, um, uh, yeah, we're just going to kill that guy. It's probably around there-ish. And... Um, and that that should be that should be this flank almost cleaned up if we can get that. I mean, lightning. You don't need to you don't need to rush forward and risk your life. Why are you doing this? Just you know, 
<laughs> so let us kill the Edinburgh. He's almost dead anyway. He's going to be running. There he is. Okay. Still sitting broadside on in his smoke. And he's got to dodge the Edinburgh's torps. And for some reason these haven't hit. Because he's been starting to move probably. But uh, a couple more shots to see if we can catch him. And uh, that's the Edinburgh dead. Now there is one, two... There are one, two battleships. But um, if you look at the medium map, you see that we are having what I think is generally called a veritable lemming train. Um, all my team is heading over to the flank here, uh, which means we are probably going to be capped. So what I'm going to do is head back to the capture circle and uh, see if I can do anything about it. But I mean, on my own season, probably not going to be a huge, uh, a huge problem. The, the, our destroyer is frantically calling to deal with the other DD. I don't even think the DD is the problem. It's that cruiser that's heading for our capture circle and is almost there. There's a... Yeah, everybody's running from the cup. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to head back and um, shoot at things while we can. And see if we can help out back there. I mean, the Amagi is just legging it. The problem is, if that cruiser makes it into the capture circle, they're going to cap us out before uh, before we can cap out. Um, because there are still two battleships and a cruiser defending the enemy capture circle that we're going to have to break through. So I'm going to try and help as much as I can while I'm here. And the uh, enemy cruiser near our cup isn't yet in... In range but uh, yeah that Chapayev that thing needs to not be in our cup so that's the very first thing yes um, and uh, please anybody shoot at this guy Amagi maybe you're in a battleship you don't need to run away from a Sh from a Chapayev just you know shoot him in his broadside that he's giving you with armor piercing uh, but uh, yeah no such interest now uh, I'm pretty sure the Chapayev doesn't know exactly what the uh, the tone is is capable of but he knows that it's a Japanese ship, and there comes some uh, some Shapi torps, but these shouldn't even have range, yeah. He knows it's a Japanese ship, and it's rushing him, so it's having torpedoes. There is a battleship coming to back him up. I just want to shout at him very loud, and actually get him out of the capture circle. Now, the uh, the Shapayev is out is outgunning me, but whatever battleship that is back there is outgunning me more. So the whole point now is, and our capture circle is going to regenerate by itself, I don't need to sit in it, uh, because it hasn't been neutralized. But the whole point of what I'm doing here now is to try and delay uh, these two from cupping, because uh, the enemy, uh, our friendly team is still not in any, is not in any. Um, I'm letting them know that I'm defending the base. Is not in any position to, um, is not in any position to uh, to cup. They're not making any move here, so uh, they're still milling around there, and I'm almost dead. But what I have managed to do so far is keep the Shapayev out of the cup. So the way this works is. If your if your team holds one capture circle, and then manages to start to flip the other one, well, that's when you win. So, pre presuming that we are going to, and I'm, I'm going to be dying here in a second because I'm being shot at by whatever that is battleship back there. Um, if if I'm going to, can I still get one torp one torp out against Chappy? Yeah, maybe. But uh, North Carolina takes me out. Um, so North Carolina starts capping, but now our DD is actually finally managing to cap uh, the enemy capture circle as well. So we need to, um, because they, if, you, if you look at the cap timer, uh, pay very close attention to it, you will see that they will start capping our cup. Um, they will start capping our cup before their cup is ticking over. But because our, their cup is contested, they're not going to win that way. And I mean, they're down to three ships. It's three against five. The problem, and it's probably going to be uh, two against five. But they are cupping, and if I hadn't prevented the Shapayev, they would have probably cupped us out by now. So at this point, they are not holding their own capture circle because it's contested, and now they are starting to capture our circle. So for a minute here, or for a short pack of seconds here, they are holding part of both capture circles, but they're not holding. Um, they're not holding both of them. So we have pre we have delayed them long enough that our team was able to flip the enemy capture circle, and now they can deal with. Um, with that Kansas there and just kill him and then complete uh, complete the cup. Uh, yeah, veritable lemming train, but um, uh, that th that's something you can do with Japanese cruisers because of the torpedo threat that you're posing. So anybody in his right mind, if he sees a Japanese heavy cruiser rushing them, is going to be careful. Not because the Japanese cruiser is necessarily going to be surviving, but that thing's going full on Banzai. Um, means it's gonna get torpedoes away and these torpedoes hurt and Japanese cruisers tend to have a lot of them so that's one thing you can use actually just to use the reputation and now we've we've traded cups so it's uh, base trades complete but because we are ahead on points we're going to win this one 
Uh, yeah, well, what, what, you know, <laughs> the things you do to get your teams to win, isn't it? So, um, and uh, Shapayev seems to have done most of the damage on the enemy team and the lightning on our side. But, uh, yeah, uh, th that's something you can do in, in a Japanese ship. Now, let's, uh, let's see a little bit more, uh, a little bit more gameplay from the, from the Tone because, well, we haven't really seen all that much at this rate. <laughs> In this second battle, we are actually up against the carrier. There is a Saipan in the enemy team, Kansas, Amagi, Double Algerie, Akizuki, and Aka. And it's a, no, it's a domination. And dominations are nice. So generally what you want to do in a Japanese cruiser, this, this sort of battle, is keep your distance, set fires, and spam torpedoes. Use your concealment to get into initial positions where you want to be. But you're not necessarily something that goes enhance destroyers, so you do have to be a little bit careful. Now, once again, the Tone has more, all of her guns up forward, so uh, not not straight forward, but uh, with a reasonable angle, she probably has a she probably has a slightly better or at least equivalent firepower than uh, to, than the, the Takao, because I'm not sure what the rear angles on the guns of the Takao are. But we are fast, we are stealthy, and uh, we are heading straight into that capture circle. Uh, because there are planes out there, I'm not, uh, and it's a Saipan, I'm not yet using my scout planes because the Saipan can just wipe them out before I get to see anything. So I don't quite know yet what's going on, but it's a domination map and I'm more focused right now on uh, on giving air support, uh, air defense for that Akka, such that uh, he's not going to die to the Saipan uh, planes. There is a destroyer in A, we know that much, and there's some some fire incoming. So, yeah, it's, it's one of the Algeries. Okay, I'm not sure what the carrier's game here is, but he's definitely not going to hit me this way with torpedo bombers. And I'm shooting a bunch of them, a couple of them down, but it's not like a huge amount, because it's it's not a, while you have the defensive AA, it's not a great, uh, great deal. So, um, double Algerie we have here, and pr probably a destroyer? And maybe. So I'm just dumping some torps here. Uh, yeah, there's the Aka. And then keeping keeping the island in between me and them and in order to uh, push them away and prevent them from coming around any further. And I think that Akas is going to find out that, oh yeah, there are torpedoes coming my way. Once again, the angles are absolutely dreadful, and um, it's hard to actually get shots out. If I had the rear turrets of a Taka, I could have blocked the Aka in the side. The problem is, I only have the turret forward, so I have to turn the ship around. And that Algerie is going complete ham. Uh, and he's probably done. These are not his torps. No, there are more torps coming in. So yeah, I'm gonna have to dodge those uh, shots out at the Algerie. I'm kind of tr tempted to try the armor piercing, but once again, the um, the AP on Japanese ships is in heavy cruisers is not great. So a uh, bunch of shots out at the Algerie, but they're not doing anything at all. They're bouncing off. We're doing semi pins. So you're actually better off uh, using your HE. In this case, I don't need to because the Algerie has turned around trying to get his rear torps, uh, his other side torps, and he's very dead now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the armor piercing is doing, isn't doing anything. I mean, this is an Algerie I'm shooting at, right? You know what, these these things are completely made out of paper. But um, there's the Akatsuki, and against destroyers, the armor piercing is actually su can be surprisingly good, although I generally still prefer the uh, high explosive tins for a chance to set fires. And if you're close up, but if you're at this range, the armor piercing against something like an Akatsuki is actually pretty decent. So uh, there's still a, there's still the other Algerie in there, and um, the, the carrier is coming to help out. But uh, yeah, we, we want to kill that guy. Now he is hiding behind the island, and uh, given that it's, it's an Akatsuki, and the Algerie also has torps, there are probably torps in the water. So I figure, um, oh yeah, there you see, <laughs> and that was with the high explosive. Uh, I, I figure. Mm, I'm gonna go and um, and stop the ship here because I don't want to. Uh, I'm just want, trying to be fancy here. I mean, the carrier is dropping the Akatsuki as well, but I think the carrier is missing his drop. So right now, of course, he can not. The, the moment I'm I'm starting my planes, uh, he's coming out, and I could have killed him with the guns. But now I'm, I've got my planes out, so I am actually gonna try and, um, and I've got some torpedoes incoming, so I do have to get back to the ship and dodge these torps. Uh, these are Aka torps, so he's probably gonna uh, gonna dodge my. A uh, very inexpertly done uh, torpedo bomber drop, and yeah, the torpedoes have a very, very short range, but I have only taken one Akka torp, and now we're going to hunt him again, the more traditional cruiser way. Uh, our Akka is extremely brave, and we're going to go and help him out against the Algerie, and see what else we can get done here. How is it looking like? We are ahead on points, because we have been holding most of the capture circles, and we're still working on this one. That's a fire on the Algerie, and uh, is he going to run into all those torps? Well, most of them. 
So I'm just gonna really stick with the um, stick with the high explosive. But uh, now I'm gonna have to stop because the Algeries probably got torps away. And there's the carrier coming in. There's nothing I can do about the carrier drop because that was a good drop, so that's gonna hurt. Yeah, ouch. Uh, yeah, there come the Algerie torps. So I'm gonna have to see that I dodge most of those. Um, yeah, even with the defensive AA up, you're not, and it's a bottom tier carrier, you're not gonna defend yourself effectively. But I think the Algerie is now low enough on hit points that I should be able to just kill him from here. Just dodge those Akka torps still that are coming around. Okay, that's the Algerie gone. And the Akka has left the building. Elvis has left the building. But I'm now on extremely low health. Uh, so I probably don't want to be using my guns anymore. I just want to... I just want to... Uh, so I'm going to, once again, sending, uh, sending the planes out, trying to chase down that low health Akka. I know he's not in the cap because I'm capping. And I'm the only one in there. And the Saipan has left me alone pretty much, so... Uh, I am just uh, I'm just sailing away from the torps that I know are there. We've managed to cup, and there he is. Okay, let's see if we can catch him. But yeah, if you if you've seen me play carrier before, you already know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to completely mess this up. <laughs> so I'm trying frantically, and nope, <laughs> I was too late. The planes had already dropped at that point. So um, yeah, these torpedoes are probably going to miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's that's that's just how it is. So uh, the the and yeah the the Saipan has has vectored some uh, some fighters over and my planes are not really going to come back. I think one of them came back. But uh, yeah, let's see if our carrier is any more is any more proficient in killing that destroyer. Well, it looks like the Saipan is giving him air cover. So yeah, it's not really much we're going to be able to do. So we'll just sail back here and see if we do anything about it. So in general, um. Is this a great ship? Uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan. It's an interesting ship because of it's got a lot of new and unique mechanics to it. But um, uh, I'm not a huge fan because of, well, first of all, the torpedo angles. The torpedo bombers are, in my hands, are basically useless because, uh, well, <laughs> I'm crap <laughs> with, with these things, and it, it distracts me too much, right? So if I'm fuffing about with the torpedo planes, I am not actually going to be able to be a cruiser. So they are kind of useful for early scouts, but other than that, I mostly just don't use them. In which case, uh, they're not really that valuable for me because it's one gun that I'm missing, plus the um, kind of meh torpedo angles, and... Um, and I'd, I'd rather, and, and I have I have fewer torps than the Takao in the same tier. So uh, personally, I'd rather I'd rather play the Takao and play her, you know, just like a normal Japanese cruiser and how I would play these things. But um, the, the the placement of the guns and the, the torpedo angles are a little bit awkward in my personal opinion, and uh, not a massive fan of of this. Also, the forward the forward oriented guns always give me. The idea that I should be playing bow in, and I've set the ship up to play more bow in than, than kite away, and uh, that's not something you can always do in a Japanese cruiser if you come under fire. That's not what these things are made for. And the dam the armor might be slightly better than on a Takao, but not much. So um, it's an interesting ship, and I would say if you're a carrier player and you're actually really good in using your um, using your torpedo bombers, you can well you one one squadron is going to take half a destroyer off uh, just like your normal torpedo uh, bomber squadron woods would with the uh, eight torpedoes that you drop you have a pretty good chance if you know what you're doing to actually hit the little buggers so you have you know like an additional tactical advantage it's a very tactical ship and it can be good for for supports uh, personally that's generally not like how i like to have that's the, the mindset i have with japanese cruisers so um yeah, if that's something you like, and if you're good with torpedo bombers, by all means. Uh, personally, given how terrible I am with these things, I am probably going to skip this one. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.